inviting me to this exciting event. So I would like to talk about our uh, research. Okay. So uh, about our research in biomedical, uh, biomedical research in Tokyo University, not only for engineering, but like we have a collaboration between engineering school and medical school and other, uh, other institutes. So um, one of the goals or the targets uh, of our biomedical research is we want to be a fortune teller. We would like to predict your health. We would like to be we would like to be a fortune teller for the benefit on your on your health. But if you think deeply, what we are doing is that we are not like forecasting the fortune, but we are more likely to be a misfortune teller. So the reason that I say misfortune teller uh, is that, of course, like you know, we use the power of science, a medical science. Uh, to tell you the risk of diseases. So if you go to, if you, um, so I just uh, show you uh, the major causes of death in Japan. Um, so of course, like the cancer is the leading cause as, as, uh, as in many countries, many other countries, followed by cardiac diseases. There's senility, so you know this is an, an, not a disease. So, but then you know you you look uh, you'll find stroke um, in the fourth place, and then comes pneumonia, accident, aspiration pneumonia, especially for older people, renal failure, dementia. But this, so this is a kind of a death statistic. Statistics, but um, if you think uh, it's it's very simple. We also have a big health burden in dementia, or cognitive diseases, and also uh, mental diseases like, like depression. So these uh, should be the, uh, the main target of our biomedical, biomedical research, uh, identifying the risk of these diseases. So how we do that? Uh, I would just uh, briefly mention about the, the basic study design for identifying the potential risk factors. So this is called a cohort study. This is usually a population study, and you have like hypothetical risk factors, uh, the potential risk factors in your mind, and you make a big survey uh, through the, the population. If a person has a risk factor or not, uh, a potential risk factor or not at baseline, uh, so, so they are like risk factor positive, they are not the risk factor negative. So, and we tracked them for many years, uh, well, at least like 10 years or 20 years. And of course, like you have to have uh, the target disease in your mind. For example, uh, this slide shows you uh, the, 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 the target as myocardial infarct, the heart attack. So after some, some years, you'll find like some people have died or ha had, had an onset of myocardial infarct. And then uh, you'll see like there could be a difference uh, between risk factor positive and risk factor negative. Of course, like, you know, to, be, uh, to, to, to establish a risk factor, you have to have the statistical difference between the, the number of myocardial infarct per, 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 per population. So this is just an example. So most of the disease risk factors are identified in this study design. Okay, so um, the, one of our big projects in Tokyo University is Tohoku Medical Megabank uh, pro project. Um, this is, uh, the project is, um, um, the project is now, uh, we have a big building in, in our campus and this is called Tohoku Medical Megabank Organization. Okay, so the cohort study involves, it started in 2000, year 2000, uh, 2013, after the great earthquake. And the target population is Iwate Prefecture and Miyagi Prefecture. And uh, up to now, we have 84,000 uh, 84, volunteers uh, who joined the, the cohort study, plus uh, 73,000. But th this particular 73,000, we name it a, a Tohoku Medical Megabank Burst 3 Cohort Study because we are targeting families. 
So disease identified um, in the uh, older people, um, so may, maybe the genetic factor may be transferred to the, to the younger generation and we'll be able to identify. So the, risk, the potential risk factor in this particular study is um, the, the main, main stuff is the, are the genes. A plus, uh, we call it a biobank. So we get samples from uh, these people, uh, including protein and proteins and, and many, many other biological uh, samples. So, um, so, the, the, so we get like samples uh, and the sample biological specimens, specimens are listed here and we make it a biobank so that um, people, researchers can get the samples and study uh, their, their own, I mean, to, to, to proceed on their, their study, to identify uh, the potential risk factors and the relationship with the health data. So we also have uh, additional uh, cohort studies uh, among, uh, within this study. And there is a brain MRI project to identify mental risk factors and also for maternity log study so that we can identify potential risk factors in the babies. Uh, um, and finally, uh, which may lead to uh, prevent prevention st strategies. So this is how it works. So uh, those group of researchers interested in this, uh, th this biobank may have an access to the biobank. But we have issues. How can we identify potential risk factors out of the blueprint of genome? And why I say this is that human genome has a huge amount of information. So 3.1 billion base pairs, those who are familiar with the DNA uh, may recognize, but this is a huge amount of information. And in terms of the number of genes, we have more than like two, uh, 22,000 well, 22, genes. And um, as shown in the, uh, the disk graph uh, down below, the, the 22,000 genes, only this part, of uh, among the 3.1 billion base pairs. So many uh, DNA pairs are not, I mean, we, we don't, we still don't know the function. And of course, like they're not always used because they're blueprints and we only use, uh, each cell use uh, their own set of genes. So we need new strategies. Of course, like uh, this is uh, the, this study is going everywhere in the world globally, but we have an advantage of having huge amount of information uh, with a biological specimen. So of course, like bioinformatics um, and AI uh, using like neural networks for pattern finding among the set of genes. And there is also a new term called epigenetic analysis. So we are not always using all the genes. So we we are locking some uh, some uh, we are locking you know uh, some some genes uh, which are not being used. Uh, but we occasionally, in response to uh, the environmental stimuli or your behavior, you unlock the genes. So how we unlock or lock the genes is uh, is uh, be, has been analyzed in the uh, genetic analysis. So. Using these uh, techniques, then you know we can we can well we can tell the misfortune. We can identify the uh, the risk factors. But the question is, uh, to for the benefit of uh, us, um, the living uh, the living people, how do we mitigate the risk? So this is still a question, and and it should be human centered. For example, I would like to ask you. So would you like to prevent your disease? Uh, by a pill or your behavior. Yeah, pill is easier. Uh, one of the best model is like the anti-hypertensive anti drug. So many people uh, take the pills uh, to bring down their, their blood pressure, but is it better than to modify your behavior? Um, well, uh, the current, the recent studies are, have identified that uh, modifying your behavior has certain advantage over pills. Of course, it's easier, but behavior, changing behavior is not very easy. 
changing the changing your diet okay do tough exercise workouts okay let's think about it of course like you know techs are important the technology so we are in the biomedical engineering and we have a lot of like uh, te technologies that i'm going to introduce very soon um but still like many are ob obtrusive you know you don't i mean it's cost some uh it's not easy to use it's not like user friendly so so for this this particular point design thinking is essential so human centered thinking okay i would just like to uh show a small video uh this was not originally not originally planned but the, let's see if it works or not um okay the UN has set 17 Sustainable Development Goals. The COI Tohoku site focuses on three of these goals. Diagnoses and screenings are more common, but sudden deaths are not decreasing. More people are also living in loneliness and isolation. To solve these problems, we are developing a daily health screening system with unobtrusive sensing. This sensing technology uses small sensors and body-friendly devices. We want a society where multiple generations can connect, interact, and support each other. So in this particular project, which started um, seven, seven years ago, uh, we are developing new technologies to identify your behavior, your risk, potential risk factors. But um, I must say some have become a little bit unobtrusive, but still, you know, we need more development. So um, finally, I would like to mention about our Japan Biodesign Tohoku program since 2015. So as I said, like design think process um, is essential, but this particular program, this is a kind of an educational or the training program for uh, the future bi uh, medical innovators. Uh, but the program uh, requires, of course, like design think. So we actually provide a training session for for design thinking process in medical device innovation. So the the main the hurt of the program is to identify unmet needs through clinical emergent at Tokyo University Hospital. So um, we actually we annually uh, recruit uh, at, at least um, four candidates uh, for the fellowship program. Um, and they make a team and they, they don't need to be um, um, medical doctors or medical professionals, but also engineers or uh, I mean, MBAs and graduate students or master course students. And they make a team and they go into the hospital and they identify a metnis. So the important thing is to have the patient or family experience or medical staff experience including like doctors, nurses, uh, um, and, and, and other uh, medical professionals. So after identifying the needs, so we, we ask uh, the fellows uh, to identify as many as need, uh, um, needs that uh, you, you, uh, you, you look at, as uh, you find out through the, uh, the, the clinical emergent process. And after that, we, they work hard you know, uh, several, for, for several months and then um, to, to, and to brush up their knees and pick up some knees, the best knees, uh, they now uh, go into the solution concept building and which will be supported by Tohoku University of Biomedical Engineering. And this program was originally designed in Stanford Biodesign and uh, we have a strong collaboration with them. So um, our product since 2015, um, we already have three startups. Uh, I only uh, show introduce like two startups, but one is uh, called Mary, and this is uh, they're providing a sleep apnea treatment uh, solutions 
uh, led by CEO Dr. Hirohumi Taki uh, from our school. And to the right, uh, we have a new uh, startup, but this is a consulting company. Uh, we, we call it Life to Die and uh, for medical innovation. So uh, uh, Dr. Yosuke Hara, he's an otolaryngist, but uh, he's now an expert in consulting. So if you're interested in, please contact them. So um, I think my time is up and um, I, um, Last not the least, I have to uh, give my, I mean, uh, express my sincere acknowledgement to uh, Tohoku Medical. M many people were working um, um, in Tohoku Medical Mega Bank organization, as well as uh, Center of Innovation Tohoku project, and as well as uh, people in the Japan Badadan program. And we are greatly, uh, we greatly appreciate uh, the strong support by Stanford. Bio Center for Bio Design. Thank you very much for listening.